Almost a year ago, I made a video about long distance photography and a lot of people in that video's comments asked about why doesn't your horizon curve? What's wrong with your model? Uh, and so I came to realize that a lot of people have misunderstanding about how much of horizon curvature is actually predicted by the globe model that our Earth is a sphere of about 6,371 kilometer radius. And so I figured out I would go through the math of deriving and then showing how much the horizon actually curves from a uh, variety of different observer heights. So here we go. The basic observation here is that to an observer positioned at some height above a sphere, the horizon appears as a circle that is at a right angle to the line connecting the observer to the sphere's center point. In this diagram, we have an observer at height big H above a sphere with center big C and radius big R. One point on the horizon, little h, is defined by a tangent line touching the sphere through the observer's position. If the observer were to look in all directions, all those other horizon points, due to symmetry, must form a circle of radius little r, a distance of little d, underneath the observer's position. We can calculate the horizon radius little r and the horizon drop little d via simple trigonometry. First, we observe that the points big C, little h, and little o form a right triangle with the right angle at point little h. Therefore, we know that the ratio of the length of angle alpha's adjacent edge, big R, and the length of the hypotenuse, big R plus big h, is the cosine of alpha. Turned around, alpha is the arc cosine of big R divided by big R plus big h. We can then observe that the points big C, little h, and little c also form a right triangle and calculate the length of alpha's opposite edge, little r, which is the horizon circle's radius, as big R times the sine of alpha. Next, we can calculate r sub zero, the length of alpha's adjacent edge, as big R times the cosine of alpha, which, after plugging in the formula for alpha, simplifies to big R squared divided by big R plus big h. And finally, we calculate the horizon drop d as observer height big H plus sphere radius big R minus big R sub zero. Now, in order to visualize the curvature, we can't just take the radius we've take, we've calculated and draw it on the screen. We have to keep in mind that even though the horizon is a flat circle, the viewer is kind of standing right in the middle of it and the horizon is going out into the distance. So we have to treat it as a 3D object and then take a virtual picture of it using a perspective projection. Uh, that's what I'm doing here. This is a virtual camera and in order to make it more comparable, I have set up this virtual camera to match the real camera I have in my cell phone, which is a standard uh, smartphone. It has a field of view of approximately 72 and a half degrees by uh, 44 degrees. And this black line here is the horizon for an observer height of two meter, which is not particularly useful. The observer is standing right at sea level. So the horizon radius is about five kilometers. The horizon drop is about four meters. And you can see that the horizon is almost completely a straight line. Uh, if I draw here a navigation crosshair that shows me what the actual uh, eye level is, then you see that it perfectly lines up because the horizon is only 0 0.045 degrees below eye level. The first elevation that I really want to try is 45 meters, which matches the elevation of Point Doom in Malibu, because that is the elevation from which I recorded um, that video where people were asking about the curvature. And here you can see that there is no curvature. Um, the horizon has dropped now by 0 0.2 degrees, as you can see, but it is still almost entirely straight. It's just we are not high enough yet uh, to see anything. So we need to get way higher. And the next elevation I want to try is 417 meters, which matches the observation deck of One World Trade Center in New York. So if we were to look out the window there uh, towards the, let's say, Atlantic, this is what the horizon would look like. Now, if you line this up and if I tilt the camera a bit and line this up with my crosshairs, you can see that there's a very slight curve there. It's maybe two or three pixels or so, but it is so subtle that if you were to take a real picture, it just would be uh, drowned out by noise and clouds and fog and what have you. So there's pretty much no way you can see it. We have to go way higher up for that. And the next higher up would be the summit of uh, Mauna Kea on Hawaii Island at 4,207 meters. And which case the horizon is now starting to exhibit a visible curve. If I line it up with my crosshairs again, you can now see it's about curved by maybe 10 pixels or so. So this is something that if you look very, very carefully in a, a very carefully taken picture, you might actually be able to see. Still, 
if you're standing anywhere on the Earth's surface and you have an ocean in your view like Mauna Kea here, it's still something that is probably too subtle to really see. So what about a commercial airliner? If you're taking a long distance flight and you're flying up there at cruising altitude of 36,000 feet or approximately 11,000 meters, then this is what it should look like. And now this is something that you could actually notice if you were to take a picture of that. Um, now, uh, keep in mind that the field of view here from left to right is about 72 degrees, meaning that you have to get pretty close up to the airplane window or get your camera really very close up in there um, to take this picture and actually see this. But it, the globe model at least predicts that it should be possible to capture this picture of the curvature up there. Now, it is very popular to take balloons and send cameras up to take pictures, and so I want to go to 41,419 meters, excuse me, which is the world record for manned balloon flight, which was set by Alan Eustace when he went up there and then jumped down and parachuted all the way back down. If he had taken a selfie up there, uh, it, the horizon would have looked about like this. Now I want to point out another field in this dialog box here which has a visible surface. That is the percentage of the Earth's surface that is actually visible from that height. And in this case it is 0.3%. So it's a very, very small amount of the surface that this guy Alan could have seen from that point of view if he had looked all the way around. It's just going to uh, come into focus later on. Uh, so the next elevation I want to go to is the International Space Station, which has an average orbital height of 400 and sorry, 400 and yeah, 409 kilometers, uh, and there we can now really begin to see some curvature. Now, when they take pictures up there out of a window, or when a spacewalking astronaut takes a selfie, they typically don't line it up like this. It's typically like that. Uh, but you see how the orientation of the camera really doesn't affect the curvature very much. And this looks very similar to a bunch of pictures I've seen. So this is pretty consistent with the kind of pictures uh, that you see taken at the International Space Station. And now I want to get back to the visible surface. At this observer height of 409 kilometers, the people up there can now see 3% uh, of the Earth's entire surface. So still a very, very small amount if you think about it. The next height up is 705 kilometers, which is the orbital height for the Landsat 8 uh, satellite. And so Landsat still sees only about 5% of the Earth's surface at any given time, um, but has now a very noticeable uh, curve to the right. My camera still can't see the entire surface all at once. I have to pan around in order to uh, actually bring the entire globe into my camera view. I have to go way, way up to 10,700 kilometers and then I have to find the globe here it is and now you notice it fits more or less exactly into my camera's frame I calculated this ahead of time uh, and from this height 10,000 kilometers you can actually see more than 30 percent of the Earth's surface this is kind of important because oftentimes you see pictures of the globe from different altitudes or from different heights and then the the proportions of the continents or the oceans don't match at all between those images and that is because then they were taken from different heights which severely changes the amount of stuff that you can actually see. So any kind of given object from this altitude would look a lot smaller than it would from let's say 50,000 meters or 100,000 meters. The next elevation I want to go to is 20,200 kilometers which is the orbital height of the GPS satellite network. From their point of view, the globe looks like this, and they can see 38% of the surface. And then the next interesting higher up is uh, 35,786 kilometers, which is geostationary or geosynchronous orbit. So that is where all the telecommunication satellites live, and they can now see almost actually more than 42% of the surface, and uh, the globe now looks really quite small. And the final height I want to go to is the surface of the moon, which is at an observer height of 376,292 kilometers. So if you were standing on the surface of the moon and then taking a picture with my cell phone camera of the Earth, it would look like this, quite small, and you would now see almost 50% of the surface, so almost the entire hemisphere that is facing towards you. Um, because you're now so far away that it's essentially almost infinitely far away. 
Um, and that is what I wanted to show. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time.